day 19 of Advent, where we are in Paris on a crisp, beautiful day with my aunt and uncle because it's my aunt's birthday. So we've planned a day of all of her favorite things. We started this morning with a champagne breakfast at the hotel, and now we have come to a museum that she has never visited before. It's the Musée Nissim de Camondor. I have been here before, so some of you will remember it from a year or two ago, but I'm so excited to come back because it is my favorite museum in Paris. It was a beautiful home that was made for Moise de Camondor. You would think in the 18th century, but in fact, at the turn of the 20th century. It was for him to live with his two children, Nissim and Beatrice. And it doesn't really feel like a museum because it's exactly as Moise left it. His son Nissim became a fighter pilot in the First World War, fighting for France, and he gave his life for this country. His heartbroken father at that point decided that he would bequeath his home to the French state, exactly as it was with all of the furniture after his own death. He died just before the Second World War, and that is when the story takes an even more tragic turn, because during the Second World War, his only daughter Beatrice and his two grandchildren were murdered in a German concentration camp. But this museum remains their legacy, a testament to Moise's extraordinary vision and taste to a time when the family were happy together. And because of this place, the Camondors will never be forgotten here in Paris. I don't think my aunt can think of anything better to do on her birthday than look at stunning 18th century art. These are from 1750. Here at the past. And it's unusual to see them on a stair, but every single placement of furniture is the original placement where Moise de Camondor put it himself. Really? Yes, he insisted everything remained in exactly the same place. Gosh. It's amazing taste. I was wondering how it could be at exactly the same level of the balustrade. What chance? But it wasn't chance. Look, he had it lifted a little bit, so it just looks perfectly in line with the stairs. You got a little bit made. To yes, to tie in and hide the gap. That's what I want to do. In quite Man a few places. Yes. It has to be said, everyone who saw the Christmas Diaries last night will have seen your incredible house. And you can see you've got a very similar aesthetic. I, I never realised how much French taste I had. Yes. Before coming back to France and yeah. looking at old houses with historic furniture and sculpture and everything. It's... And what you did is incredible because you managed to put this feel into a 16th century bar, oh, yeah. <laughs> which is amazing. Yes. With some English furniture, yes. which I yes. like as well they, so much. They, yes, they harmonise yes. together. Yes, absolutely. Work. The juxtaposition works. It's just the, the feeling you have in here is so cosy, so warm. Yes, you just want to stay. So, oh, and, so you can see, and you can see how, how thoughtful it has been. Mm. Decorated. You, know, you can feel it was a house with love. Feel. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not a museum or something there. No. It's something which has been thought about and felt. It's a and, uh, yes. It's so, so, so warm. warm. It's beautiful. But then when you see the photos of Nissan, it's heartbreaking. I looked yes. at it and yes. I saw the two photos and I felt so ill in, in my stomach. Yeah. It, it is horrific what it happened is. to this family. Yes. Oh, it's and everything yeah. they gave to France. Yeah, it was a yes. barbaric time. Yes, yes it was. Yes. Dreadful time. It was. I love it. There's nothing I don't like. Everything your eye sits on is heaven. Everyone is emotional. I keep looking at you, Stephen, and touching it. Touching it had a tear in her eye. I keep walking into the room and I just feel my jaw just... <laughs> <laughs> that is a desk at which to edit the Chateau Diaries. I love the chair as well. Isn't it gorgeous? All of the furniture in the entire house comes from the last third of the 18th century. I think there's one or two Louis exceptions. Says. Yes, Louis XV and Louis XVI. Mm -hmm. That's it. Everything. So it's incredibly harmonious. I love the clock. Have you seen the clock? It's only a tiny piece, but it's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. Moise de Camondor had the entire house built in the 18th century style, except for the layout. Because as you know from French chateaus, and we have that also at La Lande, all of the reception rooms were usually en enfilade. You would go through one into the other. There were no corridors. But Camondor wanted a very comfortable house. So he wanted it in a modern style. As you can see here, there's a huge corridor, which means each of the rooms can be made private. At the same time, the doors are huge, so at a party, everything can be opened and you can glance into all of the rooms. This place was built with all mod cons. There's even a lift, and as you'll see later, a lot more modern tricks for keeping it perfect. 
This is the Grand Salon. It's in a slightly better state than our Grand Salon. I'm, I'm going to give it that. Does inspire one as to what a Grand Salon should look like when it's finished though. Look at the little monkey on the screen. And it's quite clever the way they've used the screen to turn it into a much snugger seating area around the fireplace. Do you know, Stephanie, I just must have lived a, pre a previous life in, in a place or a time like this because I feel totally at home in here. But I, but I feel the same way. And my mother never understood it growing up in a nursing home in England. And I just loved French chateaus. Just... I mean, and I just said, this is home. Mm. This is home. Yes, it's just to settle in. I could just settle in very happily and enjoy everything, every minute of the day. Is that why I don't so like the back of my neck being touched? I think I lost my head in the yeah. from the guillotine. Absolutely love this, this idea. Yes. A frame in gold and have your curtain continue behind it. Yes. So we just make them even taller more. and thinner, thinner, which is very elegant. Exactly. That is stunning, actually. I would never have thought I of it. I've never thought about it. This is one of my favourite rooms here. Mm. They're so pale. That's the feel you will get in your grand salon. I hope so. Yes. I, I, I think, think you will. will need to have a professional um, painter. Definitely. Make the painting, the gilt, more apparent. Well, and I'm going to ask the people who are doing the specialised paintwork on the chapel if they know someone who could do the work in, yes, in the grand salon. Because it will transform your panelling. Yes. It will. Yeah. It will enhance the panelling, yeah. actually. The architect had a luxury that we don't have when we're designing the panelling for the Grand Salon. Yes. Because he actually bought the panelling before he designed the specific sizes of the rooms. Oh, so they built the room around the panelling. The original panelling. It's oak, it's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, they bought it in 1911 and then designed the size of the rooms to match the panelling. Oh, that's the way to do it. We just need to rebuild the land around the panelling. Yeah, well, we were knocking through to the floor anyway, <laughs> so we can just have the original ceiling height. <laughs> Lose the bedrooms yes. apart. I've sensed that every time I walk into a new room, I'm going to say this is my favourite room. But I do think that this is now my favourite room. And this is the Salon des Jouets. Now, any of you who've watched my video on the history of Toile de Jouy will recognise the name Ue. Ue is responsible for all of the paintings that this room was designed to hold. And he was, of course, the designer for most of the very famous Toile de Jouy that we still use today. But he wasn't just a designer of Toiles, he was also a painter. And here are some of his original works. So for me, who loves Toile de Jouy so much, to see his paintings, a whole suite of them together like this, in the rotunda that forms the centre of the house, both wings lead off from this room. It's very special. And you really can see the similarities between these paintings and Toile de Jouy's. Many animals that would be found in little farm dwellings, cows, sheep, ducks, the same bucolic charm, the very simple landscapes with small rustic buildings. The whole suite of paintings tells the love story between a shepherd and a shepherdess, but one of my favourite details is that in this one you can see her sending a dove off with a little message for him, and in this painting He's arriving with the message for the shepherd. Tatinette, that is so similar to the furniture in your boudoir with the blue. Yes, mine is ordinary, but I, I this guess, is the feel of it. They must have been inspired by you, Chantal. <laughs> yes, they've been inspired by them. Like I said, it's like I've come home because I was just reading up on him. And his other big passion was reuniting pieces of furniture that had separated. So he bought one commode and reunited them 30 years after he bought the first one. 30 years later, he found his twin. 30 years later. That is so like you. You will never split a set. I will never split a set. Welcome to the dining room. And as you can see, it's the largest room we've been in so far, which just shows you something about the importance of food to the French. The Camondors would have grand dinners here. And in fact, we still have some of the original menus that they had. For example, in spring 1933, you can imagine the Parc Monceau through the windows would have been gorgeous at that time of year. Here they had a meal of iced melon, followed by fillets of sole, and then chickens poached with tarragon, served with rice, followed by beef in aspic, served with peas and a salad, and then little parmesan pastries and a cherry granita to finish. No messing around with the menus here. That is a lot of food. Philip, have you noticed this? Yes, I have. It's How can you not? Only the Orloff service. 
Commodore had several of the pieces of the silver service that Catherine the Great ordered for her lover, Orloff. And those of you who've seen my videos from Christie's when we were doing the vignettes of their amazing sale will see that I spoke at length about a chocolatier that was being sold by Christie's, which came from the same service. Now, it was much plainer because a chocolatier would have been used in the kitchens to prepare the hot chocolate, and it wouldn't have been put onto the grand tables. These were the pieces from that same service, but that went onto the dining tables. I mean, these were the wine coolers, so they would definitely have been kept close at hand. And it's really exciting for me to see other pieces from that set. I had that chocolatier in my hand. And here the table's been set up with Chantilly porcelain from the 1760s and Saint Louis crystal. And I'm sure you're asking yourself the same question I am. Where did they store all of that beautiful porcelain? Why, in the China pantry, of course. Here we have a dream of a China pantry. <laughs> I knew that would be your expression when you saw the China pantry. <laughs> <We're> just... <laughs> yes. you, you feast your eyes on it. You do, you do. This is precisely what we're hoping to do at La Lande, and we've actually moved where we would like it to be. It was going to be right at the end of the kitchen corridor in what will, I think, instead be a sort of boot room. And now it's going to be where Pea Cocktail Corner is, just next to the kitchen as you're going through towards the dining room. It's a much better spot for it. And it's actually about the same size of room, so it just shows what's possible. I love it so much, and Moise de Camondor loved it very much. In fact, it's a little sad because he was often here alone. Once his son had died in the First World War, he would take his meals alone here in this room. There'd be a small table set up for one. He could look over the park, be surrounded by all of his favorite porcelain, and eat in this beautiful, beautiful spot. But standing here, rather than feeling sad about it, I think that actually he was still very close to his daughter. They were in very regular contact. They saw each other often. Whilst I'm sure he never recovered from the death of his son, he was nevertheless surrounded by love and by beauty. You've been making the design for the Petit Salon to be yes. turned into this at La Lande, and it is very similar. I know, I haven't even seen this. I know. And it's the same thing where the bottom ones are covered so we can have sets of plates there, and the top ones have got glass. And hidden behind a lovely door next to the dining room is the butler's pantry. Now, all of the food could be sent up from downstairs where all of the service rooms were in the kitchen. The food would have come up in this dumb waiter and anything warm could have gone onto the copper plate to keep it warm. Just before going through that little door in the distance which leads straight into the dining room. The water could have been replenished here. No bottled water, you may be asking yourselves, but of course in those days they didn't have bottled water. However, they did have a water purifier. Every detail to make this place run smoothly was thought of. And as you can see, they even had the bell system so that they could call for tea or wine whenever they needed it. And directly above this room on the next floor was the silver cleaning room, so the Orloff service would have been sparkling. The final room on this floor is the little study. He was obviously a very studious man. He had a lot of studies. The chairs. <laughs> another, another beautiful room. Are you having a nice birthday, Tatina? <laughs> the best bird Thursday ever. The half landing has these huge mirrored panels that are actually doors, a fact which is only given away by the tiny little handles in them. And there's a wonderful view over the ground floor. But let's carry on up, because I can hear my aunt up there. This is the blue salon, and I immediately notice that all of the furniture upstairs is much bigger and squidgier. I think it's much more private for comfort up here. Squidgier. Well, squidgier is, is the technical, technical yeah, it is the technical term for, yeah, larger squidgy furniture. Maybe yeah. makes a lot of sense, but funny boy, you squidge. <laughs> I'd squidge right, right, right into right. that, oh, yes. right into that you pink chest. Yes. The time slowly falling <laughs> back onto your nose. You <laughs> this room is directly above the room with all of the Ue paintings downstairs. It's another rotunda and it is, of course, of the library. And what a library. It makes me want to settle down with a cup of tea and a good book. I'm sure that Moise de Camondor spent a lot of time in this room going through auction catalogues because he was such an avid collector. He was constantly hunting down the perfect pieces for this home. This was Moise's bedroom. And 
he had a rather splendid 18th century bed in an alcove. It is gorgeous. I love the way that the curtains have been done behind that garland. My uncle's favourite thing was, of course, the nude above the bed. I saw you see, looking at the portrait of that. This is so beautiful. beautiful. The baby with his pants. With his pants. Yes, yes. It is so sweet. And he's so happy. You're having a cleaning moment, are you, the three oh. of you? We could fit all of him. Yeah. <laughs> Little loo around here. Lovely radiator. Yes. Very design. This was the study of his son, Nisim de Camondo, the gallant fighter pilot who died in the First World War. And over his bed was a portrait of his grandfather, also called Nisim de Camondo. He seems to have had a more restrained taste, darker furniture, quite masculine. There's a lot of equestrian art. In fact, this sculpture is of his sister, Beatrice de Camondo, who was passionate about horses and an extremely accomplished rider. The kitchens are that way. Oh, I think my aunt and uncle have just found the lift. Oh, you can sit down. Well, of course. Imagine the awfulness of having to stand all the way to the first floor. This is where we should have made the tamales. This is what we need, Stephanie. This is what we need. We're going to have to go around the second hand shop to see if they have one. <laughs> we actually have a very similar one at that and we don't use it. <laughs> oh. It's a Maria heaven, so easy to clean everything. And that is a beast of an oven. And their arrière cuisine, which I have to say is a little bit tidier than ours. The sinks are made of copper, but it was ingenious because the one on the right is in a steam cavity so that once you left things to soak in there, the water would stay warm. I love the way they've still got the mop out, so they've just finished washing up and all the lovely copper pots are just drying on the side. And we have the same one at La Lande, only much smaller, a basket to keep all of the eggs. This was the chef's office. So here the chef could make a list of all of the menus for the week, the ingredients that he would need. Here's the base of the dumb waiter. All the food would have been sent up to that beautiful dining room. And in true Downton Abbey style, of course, there was the servant's dining room and their lockers. Each one would have their own locker where they could keep their personal belongings. Imagine the gossiping that must have gone on down here. It was a pleasure, a total pleasure. My kind of burst, well. did it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was wonderful. I cannot recommend this place enough. I'm going to try and come every time I'm in Paris. I just love it. Now we all need a little snack. And the day is ending at the Bel Canto restaurant. Yes. And it's not just us. We have met up with Amory and Natty. Natty's mother, sister and niece are all there. It's a wonderful family gathering. Cheers, Cheers and happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. This is pressed oh, beef with oh, This looks good. Really, really excited. Man, Mann und Weib und Weib und Mann. Can I just first say, Mama, choisis the anniversary. When it's a man, choisis the anniversary. Second of all, can I just say a massive, massive thank you to Andrew and Ricardo for organising this soiree. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Always well, we love being here with you. Thank you. Third of all, can I just say welcome to the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and may we all have a fantastic, magical Christmas all together. And that's what Christmas is all about. Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad! Feliz Navidad!
Wonderful, Bertie Chantal.